Scarbs, can I just bring you back to one small point you made in the previous video? You just touched upon it and we didn't develop it any further. And that was the last year's Mercedes compared with this year's Mercedes. And mm -hmm. you there was an implication in what you said that maybe the center of gravity in terms of the fuel tank and where the fuel is might be lower on this year's car, which would imply that maybe on the zero pod car, they had a higher, as, as far as I understand it, don't the regulations completely define where the fuel tank is and what shape the fuel tank no. is? No, no, not at okay. all. You've got some areas in terms of what we call the layout of the car, which is where you put the major masses along the center line. So you've got the, uh, the monocoque where the driver sits, the survival cell aspect, um, and that has to be a certain length, and that can go as far forwards as the front axle line, but you can actually move it backwards a lot, which is what Red Bull have done. Um, then you've got the fuel tank. Now, the fuel tank obviously has to be in between the, the cockpit and the engine, but in terms of a maximum width, you've got 80 centimetres, but in terms of height, you can squeeze the fuel up as high as you want, and the zero-pod side, uh, zero-pod car really forced the fuel tank into the wrong position. So it's like grabbing a water uh, bomb and squeezing it from the bottom. So what it's going to happen, it's going to get longer, which is what pushed the cockpit forwards on the Mercedes, which really upset Hamilton's feel for the car because he was sitting too far forwards in the car, but also push, pushes all the fuel upwards. And if you actually saw uh, behind the cockpit, the fuel tank was literally behind the driver's head which we haven't really seen since the the old turbo days in the 80s before refueling when you had these massive fuel tanks the tank was very high so they had a mixed problem there the cockpit was too far forwards the fuel was too high um and then they had to compromise the shape of the gear the length of the gearbox to fit everything into the 3.6 meter wheelbase which is effectively fixed by the regulation so what mercedes have done this year is they've allowed the fuel to sit lower by taking the radiators out of the fuel tank area. And that allows you to have a shorter fuel tank, which brings the driver back along the wheelbase, brings the fuel lower. Um, and it means that they've had to change the gearbox length as well to kind of shorten that to get everything squeezed in. So they've gone on maybe a bit more conventional, should we say. Red Bull have always been the extreme where they've, pushed, they've been recently pushing everything backwards to have as much space in front of the driver's feet and the front axle to shape the car and there's some pictures come out this week which show you know the new EV section to the bottom of the chassis has been quite pronounced even more so this year than last year and that really helps because it allows the rotating airflow coming off the front wing with these big wide noses that they've been doing this year to then hit the ground effect tunnels underneath the car and it's something that no one else has really managed to replicate quite as well. So there's quite a difference up and down the grid. And it's one of those things that's very hard to quantify because you never get those perfect side-on pictures of all of the cars that you can measure. I know some people do some comparisons, but it's not quite the same thing. Wow. So just going back to put a full stop then on the Mercedes thing. I mean, you and I did talk about this fuel tank issue on mm. the Mercedes last year and about whether or not in addition to everything else that was going on and the or, or maybe it was compounding it, was the fact then that they were running a higher center of gravity, presumably because of the, the fuel cell and all the uh, other, is that right? Yeah, I mean, this is, I've kind of uh, joined the dots up and whether I've, you know, got the right, right answer is that it seemed to me that Mercedes over the past couple of years have had a, you know, a generally fast car, but what you would find is that the start of the race, and this is compounded slightly by tyre management, they didn't seem to have the pace of their rivals. But as the race went on, and clearly the fuel tank would have burned off its fuel, as you get into that last stint, and the fuel is now at the bottom of the car, lowering the centre of gravity than it would be early in the race, uh, much more than you would have in the conventional fuel tank, and then therefore equally less tyre management. Mercedes are so much quicker at the end of the race than they were at the start. So I think that there is, as I say, there is tyre management clouding that question, but I think the on fuel tanks, full tanks, that car really struggled with its centre of gravity. And that's a big thing, isn't it? I mean, that's how fundamental. I mean, we talk about all the other things that are fundamental to racing car design, and these days... People often say, oh, well, it's only about aero anyway. It doesn't really matter what you're doing with the car in, in geometrical or static terms. But you're suggesting there, and I have to say, I kind of agree with you, that central gravity is still pretty important. Roll central gravity. Roll it, it, yeah, I mean, um, our, our good friend Willem Toet 
uh, the aerodynamicist um, uh, many years ago gave me a list of all the different things that make a car faster. So if you could have 10% better aero, 10% less weight, 10% better tires, and added, you know, and how much lap time would that bring? And central gravity is up there with overall weight, which is probably the most important factor. Of course, most of these cars really, their center of gravity is just, you know, 10, 15 uh, centimeters off the uh, bottom of the car and in relative, much of it, the same position for everyone. But if you, ha yeah, if you unfortunately have to move that, which I believe Mercedes do on full did on full tanks, then yeah, it's, it is a big factor. But normally everyone is kind of in the same ballpark. So Mercedes really did mess around with this. And I seem to recall they did the same thing in one of their first or second years of um, their latest era in Formula One back in, uh, what was that, 2010, 2011. One of their tanks was really high and it gave them problems. So they kind of didn't learn from the mistake almost 10 years earlier. Which is incredible. And then also, <laughs> just to remind everybody, the reason Mercedes went down that path recently, the high center of gravity fuel path was because they were getting such great downforce numbers in the tunnel with the zero pod design so that was for them yeah. that was much more important than all these other yeah. factors yeah it's and of course basic, doesn't it when we talk about it now it seems pretty basic and it seems astonishing and it's taken them two years to sort of for the penny to drop well i think that i think in the first year we can give the you know we can give them a break because obviously everyone was quite surprised how these ground effect cars finally worked on track um it was odd that they chose to continue that um, direction into the second year of the regulations last year mm. and um, you know I think that was down to you know certain individuals and um, feeling that their success they had at the back end of that year so, you know kind of proved the concept would work mm. so yeah but when you look at the car now it really has gone you know full circle it's you know almost super conventional uh, I know that you know there are some tricks hidden away there as we talked about the front suspension and I'm sure there's a lot more to come from the team at this, uh, as the season goes on but yeah it, it was it's strange how slow it was for them to turn that ship around um, and you know, very un-Mercedes like I think you would have to say.